Hey everyone, on today's episode of Binch Al's Garage, we're going to show you guys how to install a light and flywheel clutch kit on your 12 valve VR6 2.8 liter. So let's get to work because this is Binch Al's Garage. So first things first, let's break down the clutch kit so you guys can see everything that you need to do the install. We are missing one component and it's on its way. So hopefully by the time we get to that point, we will show you guys uh, how to install it correctly. Um, so first, obviously the flywheel. We have uh, an 18 pound flywheel right here. Uh, to make sure that you got the correct flywheel, make sure that it is a 10 hole flywheel for a VR6 2.8 liter. We are using a Vallejo uh, pressure plate and clutch. Uh, we got from AutoZone. Same with the throwout bearing. It is a Vallejo throwout bearing. We got the alignment tool, a little bit of grease. This is for the shaft. And we have clutch, or not clutch, but flywheel bolts. The one piece that we are missing of the puzzle is the pressure plate bolts, which are on their way. So we'll get those once we get to that point. So on your flywheel, again, 10, 10 hole, and the same on the crank here is a 10 hole now these holes uh, only line up one way so once you put the flywheel on um, you can't just put it on and just go you have to line it up correctly um, these 10 holes are pretty much made to only go on one way so we're going to show you guys how to do that so the next step here is to show you guys the uh, the install process of the flywheel so we're going to grab your flywheel here you're going to put it on the crank just like that. Now what you're gonna do is pay attention to every hole. Um, they only go in one way, so right now they're off-centered. So we're gonna have to turn it. And what's gonna happen is that uh, right now, like half of them up here are perfectly centered, and then these down here, they're off by a little bit, and I can show you guys. See, that nut won't let me thread it in but over here I can thread it in so that's how you know if you're centered or not so keep turning it until all ten of them line up beautifully I think we're there that's impressive I've never had to do it happen in two tries let's see here so one here So what I do is I kind of go round robin, just random. Make sure they all go on. They all have to go on by hand to start off with. You don't want to cross thread your crank. Now, one thing you guys got to understand, they use a 12-point socket. So, make sure you have a, a M12, uh, I mean a 12-point M, I believe these are 6s or 8s. I'm going to double check that in just a moment. So, these guys use an M10 12-point. Now, what you want to do uh, when you start installing your, your flywheel, you're going to go all the way down until it's snug okay now these bolts go on hard because of the Loctite they use from the factory it's already dried Loctite so they don't thread in nicely like a normal bolt does these actually go in with some little bit of effort but again if you started them by hand they should be just fine
So what you want to do is stop when the when the bolt feels nice and snug because we still have to torque them to spec. So now that we got all the bolts nice and snug on here, the next step is to torque them to the very first specifications. All flywheel bolts have a two-step uh, two uh, torque sequence, which is you torque them to a specific weight, and then you do a quarter turn. So we're going to give you guys that information in just a moment. So as per the Bentley manual, uh, like every other Mark IV flywheel, uh, these go on at 44 foot-pounds plus a quarter turn. So what I recommend is to uh, start from the top and work your way down so opposite. So go up, down, left, right, you know, as a star pattern. Uh, that way you don't, um, how can I explain? Um, you don't double torque everything. So we're gonna start with the top one here. Oh, and by the way, thank you Ivan for the brand new torque wrench. Uh, we got a Craftsman torque wrench that uh, uh, one of our fellow YouTubers uh, hooked it up. So I'm super excited for it. All right, 44 on that one. So I actually get an, uh, a legit. Uh, I actually have a now have a legit uh, torque wrench. So I'm gonna mark this one because I know I did this one. So what I'm gonna do is every single one that I, uh, I do, I'm gonna mark it straight up. And the reason for this, because I still have to bring it down to a quarter turn, which is a 90 degree turn. So from here, I have to turn it another quarter. So I might as well get them all done and then get them all straight up and then that way I can turn them all a quarter turn from where they're at. Makes it easy for me to remember where I left off and I can use the marking to do a quarter turn. I'm gonna try to do something really quick. I'll be right back. All right, so we lock the, the crank so it doesn't turn on us because we need to turn every single one of these bolts a quarter turn in the same pattern, not the same exact pattern, but the same pattern going up, down, left, right, and uh, opposites from each other in the star pattern is what we call it. Um, so what we do to lock the flywheel, if you guys don't have the uh, OEM uh, tool, is grab a big breaker bar and extension and you'll see here it's a 27 millimeter socket and you let it hit the ground if you have your engine on an engine stand it'll pretty much lock itself on the ground preventing it from rotating and that's how we lock it here and it works I use I've been doing this method for years and I've yet to have ever have a bolt give me an issue um, if you can find or hunt down the actual locking tool that bolts onto here and locks a flywheel in place, by all means, go for it if you can get it. Um, they're not cheap tools, and you know, a lot of us, again, we're average people and we try to do this on a budget, and this is how we're going to do it. So, everything's marked, everything's ready for us to now do the quarter turn. So, right now, I've got to. Get my torque wrench all unlocked. Now to get my breaker bar and start turning these. So first things first, I'm gonna do the bottom one. And the nice thing is we can watch it do the turn. So we're here, we're here at the top, and we're gonna do a full quarter turn. Right there. Almost. Right there. There's our quarter turn. So, 
again. Up. Go. Beautiful. And that's what we're trying to do is get them across. And you'll notice my method is working. It's locking the flywheel in place. It is not moving the flywheel or the engine. So we know for a fact that we're doing a good job and it's working. So we're down to the last couple. So we're down to this one, this one, this one, and this one, and that's it. So those four need to be repaired or adjusted because these markers are wrong since we turned the flywheel earlier. So that one, that one, this one right here, Should be it, yep. And all done. So all 10 bolts are now done. Torque to 44 foot pounds and a quarter turn. 90 degrees from starting point to the right. And that's it. Whew. Man, it's so much work doing these guys. So the next step is you're going to get your clutch material here. Now on your clutch, there's a part that protrudes and there's a part that's flat. The flat part is what faces the actual flywheel, like that. Use your alignment tool here to get that sucker all the way in there. It goes in like that. And now you have your pressure plate. Now your pressure plate is kind of a funky plate because it only goes on one way. You'll see there's three little stubs that stick out right here. Now those three stubs pretty much have a very specific alignment for your pressure plate. So when you put your plate on, what you want to do, it's hard to notice it, but um, there's these little tabs. You'll see there's two on the edges and there's one in the middle. The middle one is what lines up with these guys right here. So when you put it in, you're going to line it up to that one. And see, now it doesn't line up over here. So we're going to rotate it. Mm -hmm. Bring it over here to this one. That one doesn't line up. I'll rotate it one more time. And that should line up beautifully. Just like that. So now, once we have all those lined up, you have six bolts. You have one, two, Three, four, five, and six. Those are the six what we call pressure plate bolts that have to go on um, on here, uh, which we can't do right now because I don't have the pressure plate bolts that are actually on their way. So we're going to take this back off. We're going to show you the clutch and flywheel installation. I mean, uh, the fork and throw out bearing installation while we wait for that part to come in. All right, so what I believe is just as important or probably... Um, equally as important as a uh, flywheel is your throw out bearing. Uh, throw out bearings pretty much is what controls the disengagement and engagement of the clutch. Um, which sit pretty much right here. Right on the actual uh, input shaft. 
and then you have your um, your clutch fork or your throw out bearing fork so this guy has a mating surface right here with his little red uh, spot is now if you guys do not maintain this little spot here you are you are gonna have to replace it these do wear down substantially and if you don't they will be in here very loose uh, during uh, pretty much driving you'll hear like a chatter and you might think oh it's flywheel or your throttle bearing failing but it might be this that's just sitting there and vibrating like crazy because it's not um, mating correctly and providing enough force against the back and forth of the movement of the transmission so always pay attention to these if these are just worn out um, and straight to metal like bare metal then this is time to replace this little uh, uh, part these are very inexpensive You're looking like a $20 part and it's an easy easy fix for uh, quieting down your pretty much your transmission while at idle or even at under high revving so just a really important thing that you guys can pay attention to so inside the clutch kit they do provide a little bit of grease packet the grease packet is for only two surfaces number one the actual shaft and number two right here I don't mind in putting a little bit of grease right here where the throw all bearing sits and slides back and forth it just allows for you know just good wear and tear on there so first things first on the input shaft itself and just this just allows you when you install your transmission onto your block for the uh, shaft to slide in much much easier into the actual engine or the crank um, you don't need a lot just so you know um, you want to put a little bit on the actual surface where the bearing slides onto the surface right here so you have the shaft itself and the actual cup here where the throttle bearing sits on so again these are just good precautions to have uh, while re servicing your transmission um, just allows the transmission and your throttle bearing to just smooth back and forth very very nice um, on here like we talked about before uh, going here a little bit on this surface and a little bit on this surface goes a long way it's where the throttle bearing actually sits so again just just a precaution it's not required but I don't mind doing it not gonna hurt anybody your throttle bearing sits right here you'll see it slides up and down just a little bit moderately but that's all we need it to do and the last bit of grease that we need to use is right here on the actual uh, spot where the shaft sits on I mean the fork sits on and again this one you can put a little bit moderate to heavy grease you can even put it on here it's as well on the actual fork itself it won't hurt anything if you put a decent amount in there and then what you're gonna do is slide it on Stoked. Um, pressure plate bolts just got here, so we're gonna use those in a little bit to install. So the fork down here, you gotta give it like a little, little smacky smack. Sometimes there you go for it to sit in there. And the way you know it's in there, you feel it kind of lock in place a little bit. And what you want to do is make sure this sits in its in its home correctly, just like that. And that's pretty much it for that portion of your uh, of your engine or your transmission. It's making sure your your fork has grease where it mounts the shaft for the throttle bearing and the shaft or the uh, input shaft for the transmission. Uh, these guys again, very very important uh, when you're doing this because when you pop it into the uh, your actual engine or the crank, you want to make this as smooth as possible and not struggle so much to get the bolts on. Uh, because man lining these up is a pain in the rear just so you guys know all right let's get to work and getting that pressure plate and clutch installed so now we're back uh, to where we left off and remember your clutch there's a flat side and there's a side that protrudes out the part that protrudes out is the actual face where the pressure plate sits on so just don't forget that very very important towards your install 
So it sits like that. This is the alignment tool, so it prevents the clutch from going anywhere else but inside, but the middle of the actual um, flywheel, you know? And now our pressure plate goes on. And remember what we spoke about last time? These little holes, they all gotta line up correctly. If you line them all three, these three right here, one, two, and three. And they only go in one way, so you'll know if you got it right, if it line goes in, pretty much. So now we got our new uh, bolts here. Six of them. These are not reusable. So anything that goes on the flywheel, they, you cannot reuse. So you got to buy your hardware uh, because you can't reuse your old stuff. So make sure you get new hardware every single time you're going to service your, uh, your clutch or replace it, obviously, because you do not want to have one of these snap on you uh, while it's driving because you can have a tremendous failure. No bueno. So there's, they're on there. So now we got to get a 12-point uh, socket. Now my little Husky quarter-inch kit has been the most faithful sockets that I've had for years uh, because it has the right size 12 point that I need which is a 9 Now, a way that you know if your hardware is the correct hardware, um, the pressure plate has to sit flush on top of the flywheel. If you didn't do that, then you did not get the right hardware, and you're gonna have to go get some new hardware. Pretty straightforward. Um, we kind of hodgepodge this kit, um, so I didn't get the OEM style flywheel. Uh, I got a lightweight flywheel because I want this thing to rev a little bit faster. Since it is a any motor, a lighter a lighter flywheel will benefit us for revving a little bit faster, so we can get to that power curve a lot quicker. It doesn't increase performance; it just helps us rev a little bit faster than stock. But remember, whenever you go to a lightweight flywheel, uh, you will get something called flywheel ch flywheel chatter, which when you let go of the clutch and it's an idle. You should hear like a da 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 da, -da kind of like a, a metal hitting um, metal, but it's not. It's just, it's what we call chatter. Now you notice that I walked all the bolts around because what happens, since these little, little metal um, stubs that stick out on the flywheel, they don't go in perfectly all the way down. They're kind of tapered, so you have to press them in using all the nuts so I kind of walk around in circles until everything's down and what I do is I check if they're snug that's it mm. and then I'm gonna torque them to spec and I don't turn really hard so so you guys know that so now you can pull the uh, the clutch alignment tool this is already pressed in so it's not gonna go anywhere anymore so the next step is to torque these six bolts to spec and install our transmission all right so now that we torqued them down they go down to 15 foot pounds and you're done uh, transmission is ready so I'm gonna call for my assistance for my wife so we can get the uh, transmission installed so 
Uh, when installing a VR6 transmission, uh, it is the same as in O2J for a 1.8T. However, the bolts for a VR6 are a little different. So you cannot put a 1.8T transmission on a VR6. The housings are different. Um, if you're willing to invest the time and effort, if you got a good VR6 transmission, or let's assume you have a good 1.8T transmission, but a bad VR6, but the housing's intact, you can swap out housings, or bell housings, what we call it, to the good one, and then you can use the transmission that way. Um, again, it's kind of a thing that if you want to put all the effort into it, you can definitely do it. If not, just go buy another used one or a good one from somebody you know. All right, so we'll be right back.